We have Gaurav Pandi, uh, who is um, uh, the spokesperson for Congress, joining us. We also are being joined by PKD Nambiar, who is um, a BJP supporter and a political analyst. And we are also being joined by DMK's A. Sarvanan on the phone line. So first question to you, Mr. Gaurav Pandi. Uh, the Congress making it clear that this is not something that is accepted to them, despite what... Personally, several leaders of the Congress, whether it be Sonia Gandhi, Priyanka Gandhi or Rahul Gandhi would have said in the past in terms of forgiving the convicts or coming to convicts or coming to terms with them. They're saying, um, Abhishek Manu Singh be saying that is their personal stand. Um, and even though different from their personal stand, as a party, uh, this is not something that is acceptable for Congress. Well, uh, as um, Abhishek Manu Singh Ji very clearly uh, let that out, uh, ever since, like since day one, our stand has been uh, the same, and we have been against the release of the uh, the the people, those who've been convicted uh, for the assassination of uh, former former prime minister. Uh, yes, and this is also true that uh, our, uh, the former president of our party, uh, Srimati Rahul Gandhi, uh, Srimati Sonia Gandhi ji, and Sri Rahul Gandhi ji, and also Priyanka Gandhi ji. They have their personal opinion. They they categorically said that uh, they have forgiven uh, these uh, people and uh, they've come to terms. But that also does not imply that uh, uh, they have uh, that they are in favor of these people being released uh, from from prison. It's very unfortunate that we live in the times where uh, uh, murderers, uh, you know, and the assassins of the prime minister or the rapists. Uh, uh, in some cases, they are being released. Some governments are uh, seeking release of the rapists. Some governments are releasing, uh, are seeking the uh, release of the assassins of the prime minister. This is this is the kind of times uh, we are living in. So uh, we uh, we definitely we oppose and we disagree uh, with, with the decision of the Supreme Court, and uh, we are not aligned as far as the state government in Tamil Nadu is concerned. We are in alliance with them, but as far as this decision is concerned, or this issue is concerned, we have always had a different stand and it will remain so uh, forever. Right, Mr. Gaurav Pandi, let me please get in uh, Mr. Sarvanan of the DMK who joins us on the phone line right now. Mr. Sarvanan, so your ally, which is Congress here, you've heard Congress say that uh, uh, they cannot come to terms with this order, this is not acceptable to them. Uh, mm. An attack or the assassination of the former prime minister is nothing short of the of um, an assault on India's sovereignty. And yet in Tamil Nadu, if you see, irrespective of who has been in power, including the DMK, as well as uh, Chief Minister Stalin for that matter, mm. they have written mm. and said that they do, don't have any objections uh, to the convicts being set free. Yeah. See, this is only on a humanitarian uh, consideration and nothing else. They have been staring at death row for the last 10 years. 10 years, every day, they wouldn't know whether they will be alive tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. If they have been hanged immediately, the problem would have been solved. But that is not has happened. They, that is, we are here only on humanitarian grounds. They have served the sentence for 30 years. Legally, this is possible. That is why the Supreme Court has released them. There is nothing more to it. See, if, if I am a Congress party worker, definitely I would also take the same stand. I would be very emotive. When you have a personal connection with your leader and something happens to me, you will not be able Mr. to Sarvanan, take it. It's See not that. about only exact... your leader. He was, he's all, he was also the Prime Minister of India. So it's hmm. not only about a Congress worker or being um, a, a Congress leader for that matter or a Congress party hmm. worker. This is perhaps larger than that being uh, the yeah. prime, See, former I Prime Minister of India. Point. Yeah, you are right. You are right. See, let us also look at history. This is not without precedence. Uh, Gopal Vinay Kotse, one of the murderer of Mahatma Gandhi, was released after 20 years in prison. He is a conspirator. These are the persons who are similarly placed like that of Vinay Kotse. So when Gandhiji's killers could be released on parole, same, same yardstick could be applied here also. That is what I told you. This is legally permissible. And we are talking about legality on humanitarian grounds. Nothing more, nothing less. Right, Mr. Sarvanan, um, uh, uh, Mr. PKD Nambia, let me just get you in for a quick reaction. As some, you've heard the Congress here, you've also ha heard the DMK here. Very quick reaction on uh, how you see this play out, considering even the central government or the BJP, you're also um, a political analyst and a BJP supporter. The BJP government has uh, in the past objected to uh, the convicts being 
uh, set free? Uh, well, uh, I think the BJP and the central government is, continues to do so. The idea is that it is not about, uh, of course, every even if a convict may have his own uh, uh, right and etc. But then this is not a normal case. As uh, Mr. Abhishek Manu Singh was telling, this is basically, it was an attack on India. This was uh, somebody who is not a normal person was not killed. It was a very well-planned murder of our former prime minister. And if the people who have done such a heinous crime attacked the nation, if they can get scot free in this country, then I think the, the, only the God can help us. I think this is not about politics. It's not about playing politics. It's BJP or a Congress. The person who was killed uh, 30 years back was not none, none less than the prime minister, former prime minister of India. So I think uh, this uh, empathy, sympathy, the legal, all those things can be talked about it. But then right. this is not the way I think the country will be, uh, will, will may have to pay a big price for such kind of a decision. I'm sure that Apex Court might have its own uh, uh, reasons to, right, maybe a Nambia, reasons to give so. To what you've said, let me just get Congress at this point in. So you even heard uh, Mr. Sarvanan of the DMK speak that this is on humanitarian grounds, uh, not Many, uh, knowing which, when the convict convicts would not know when they would be hung or the death sentence would be given to them. But that apart, um, Mr. Sarvanan also saying that if the father of the nation uh, uh, the, uh, the accused and father of the nation uh, could be set free. Why not in this particular case? Would you want to react to that? Mr. Uh, God of Pandi? Can, can yeah. I just come in? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. See, there is an audio problem. Uh, see, definitely. And uh, as Abhishek Manishwiji said, you know, this is uh, uh, attack on India. Now it's a Pandora's box because now what is it? No, this case uh, Mr. Gaurav let me repeat my question. Is, you heard DMK's statement where uh, Mr. Sarvanan yeah. said that this is on humanitarian grounds. If the father of the nation, uh, a, a convict in the father of nations uh, killing could be set free on humanitarian grounds, this is no different. It's not about politics. Would you want to react to DMK's? See, the, the uh, people, those who were uh, uh, responsible uh, for Mahatma Gandhiji's uh, assassination. That case was totally different. In fact, I would say that there are people like Savarkar who went, you know, who escaped the justice. So there was lack of investigation at that point of time. There are BL Kapoor Commission's report, uh, which is uh, to be considered today. So that's a totally different case in the different era, uh, which was uh, which existed long, long ago. It cannot be compared with what happened uh, uh, in the in the 90s and uh, the scenario that we have today. So these two cases are not comparable. In fact, what it is going to do, uh, what I was pointing out to was that there was a, uh, the former Prime Minister, uh, former Chief Minister of Punjab, uh, Bian Singh. Uh, he was assassinated and there are people, those who have been convicted of his assassination, they are on death row and they are the political party in Punjab, Akali Dal, they are seeking their release and this, this judgment, this decision of the court is going to pay way for that as well. Let me just quickly get in DMK, Mr. Sarvanan in. Mr. Sarvanan, yeah. uh, what Gaurav Pandey has said, you've heard, but not just them, Congress as a whole, even the leaders, even Abhishek Manu Singh is saying, this sets a bad precedence. It's not just about Supreme Court's verdict in this particular case, but even cases which may not be as severe as this or perhaps lesser in magnitude. What would be the precedence for keeping them uh, continuing their um, uh, uh, the imprisonment uh, time and not setting them free? What precedence does this set? See, that's why I, I told you the peculiar, this, this, no, no case could be a precedent. I'm talking about how this case is peculiar. Tell me one case where the convicts have been staring at death sentence for 10 long years. I am asking, what more torture can you inflict upon them? You could have hanged them within six months. No questions asked. This is the worst form of torture. So that is the precise reason why the Supreme Court set aside all those things. So they have, they have undergone. They have undergone everything. That is why we wanted them to be released. Uh, Mr. Sarvana, let me ask you, is this also a, a, a lot to do with 
uh, how this case is viewed in Tamil Nadu, specifically yeah. many, the, the emotions linked to this case, of course, the loss of a prime minister, but many yeah. believing that the accused in this case were not mm. really the mastermind behind this case and did not have yeah. direct links of knowing what was to happen. That is that is one of the narratives that has been uh, propagated in, in uh, within Tamil Nadu also. So would, would because irrespective of whether it is the DMK or the AIA DMK, their stand has been almost the same in this case. So it, does it also have to do with the Tamil sentiments? See, it's, it's not about Tamil uh, sentiment. What I'm saying is, Someone uh, here, uh, the late uh, the, uh, investigating officer, Mr. Thyagarajan, had filed an affidavit stating that he has wrongly recorded the statement of Mr. Pere Rivalan. Correct. So that, that changes the whole discourse. The Supreme Court, of course, did not consider that, but he has filed on oath, he has stated before the Supreme Court that I, I have wrongly recorded and that, that and Mr. Pere Rivalan has long along been claiming innocence. So that's what I'm saying. Let's not revisit all those. They have undergone whatever they had wanted and it's, 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 there's, let there be an end to it. Um, let me get in your own ally, um, Congress's uh, Gaurav Pandi to this. Gaurav, Mr. Gaurav, they're saying let this be now. It's been a can long, leave, long uh, time uh, for them in jail, the something many, even the Supreme Court has said. Um, there were the, the Supreme Court even pulled up the governor of Tamil Nadu saying that it was not happy that uh, the governor sat on the mercy petition for almost two years. So that also being um, uh, being looked at very harshly by the Supreme Court. Um, how would you react to that? There's been a lot of delay in coming to a conclusion or or, uh, or, 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 or panning out a judgment that could be given out to the convicts who have been in jail for a very long time, as some have been arguing. No, complete disagreement. Uh, if there's been delay, they should have been pushed to, uh, uh, you know, uh, towards uh, taking a decision. And I completely uh, disagree with the uh, opinion or the statement of uh, uh, the panelists from the DMK here. Uh, you, you really cannot, we really cannot say at this point of time that the statement by someone was recorded wrongly, etc. If the, the person has been convicted, either the person could be convicted or acquitted, would have been acquit acquitted. But since it's convict we are talking about, and they have been released, so any any. Uh, some arguments that, you know, a, a such thing happened there or a, a such thing did not happen there does not uh, imply today. And uh, if there was the Supreme Court had turned, uh, you know, converted their, uh, 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 their uh, capital punishment in, into uh, a different uh, sentence, that could have been uh, understood, uh, understood, right? But we could have understood that, but absolutely not this. We are in complete disagreement with the decisions that have been taken. And yes, there are there would be thousands and thousands of cases with uh, lesser degree of, uh, uh, you know, uh, criminality, I would say. Uh, with, and there people are going to seek uh, the same same thing, the release of the convicts. This is uh, apparently this is the decision. Uh, Mr. Gaurav Pandi, one question to you, PKD Nambiar. I'll come right uh, after this question back to you. But uh, to you, Mr. Gaurav Pandi, how is the Congress now looking at this? Uh, according to the Supreme Court judge, according to the court's judgment, uh, the convicts are uh, going to be set free. You know, it's a matter of time now, uh, just the procedural delay. But what is now going to be Congress's stand? How are they going to respond to this? Is there any legal stand that they are going to take? How how is Congress going to go? Because of course, you've come on record in saying that this is not acceptable to Congress. But anything beyond that? Uh, anything beyond that? In of uh, legal steps that will be considered by the uh, the uh, senior uh, leadership in the party, uh, including the lawyers, and whatever would be uh, decisions could be taken, that will be that those decisions will be taken. A very stretch of a question, but um, any reactions from the Congress, uh, from the Gandhi family uh, that would that had emerged after this verdict? A very stretch of a question, I understand, but. Within the party, any reactions that had emerged from the Gandhi family? Uh, well, uh, not in my opinion, or uh, not that I would know. Uh, so that that's right. for, for the right. for the family. Uh, right, Mr. Nambiar, one quick question yeah. to you: Whether it be Congress or the DMK, one thing that they have said, even though they are totally different in their stance, being allies, that this isn't about politics. It's not about color of politics. It's about. 
um, it, the Congress saying it's about uh, an attack on India's sovereignty and the DMK or the state government, uh, one of the state of one of the two state governments that had said that they don't have any objections in the convicts uh, being set free, saying that this is about humanitarian grounds. How would you see this? The, the approach of the, 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 the both the ruling party and the, uh, the opposition party. In fact, they were the earlier ruling party in in uh, Tamil Nadu. They both have taken this decision. Of they have been uh, asking for this. Uh, uh, Mr. Nambia, let me just come back to you. There's a breaking news coming in. We have uh, Sam Daniel here with us, who who is being joined by Nal, uh, Nalini, one of the convicts who has been set free in the who has been ordered to be set free by the Supreme Court, joined by his lawyer. That's Mr. Radha Krishnan. Sam, over to you. Thank you, Sneha. Well, I'm joined by Mr. M. Radhakrishnan, the lawyer for Nalini, one of the six convicts who would be set free uh, perhaps tomorrow following the court order, the top court, order by the top court to set them all free. So thank you very much for your time. Your first reaction. We are happy. Actually, this litigation started sometime in 2006. Nalini ought to have been released in 2006 itself because we have a special scheme for premature release of life convicts in Tamil Nadu. Suppose you complete 10 years or 14 years and your conduct is good, you are required to be released. So that's our scheme. That After all the back and forth, yes. the Tamil Nadu cabinet recommended the release of all the seven convicts seven. in 2018. Yes. Do you think the governor ought to have abided by that at that time itself? Certainly. You see, on 9-9-2018, Tamil Nadu cabinet took the decision, right? At least in October 2018, governor should have accepted, signed the GO and released them all. Unfortunately, governor was sitting on the file for a long time. But the constitution bench of the Supreme Court in Maruram's case, clear, you know, to this effect. Once cabinet decision is taken, it is binding on the governor. The government the month has no, you know, different opinion. He cannot question. The moment he receives the decision, he should have signed it. It is only because of the failure of the governor to discharge his constitutional duty. All these four, seven people have suffered along. Would your client, Ms. Nalini, now contemplate seeking any kind of relief or compensation? So far, we have not, not thought over the matter. But actually, all these seven people are entitled to claim compensation for their illegal detention from 9-9-2018 till today. You call it illegal detention? Yes, certainly. Because once the cabinet has taken the decision, they are supposed to be released the next day. The governor ought to have acted. When the governor fails to act, so how it should be called? It is illegal detention. Even we filed a petition, you know, on behalf of Nalini earlier. Unfortunately, the Madras High Court, you know, didn't agree with us. But now, the Supreme Court has made it clear that decision is binding on the governor. Right. Yes. Conflicting views on the release of all these seven convicts. It began with the release of Pedro Rivalan in the month of May this year. Many say these members were involved in the assassination of a former prime minister. They shouldn't be released at all. Already, their death sentence was commuted to life. Uh, what would you say to those arguments? <clears throat> Actually... All these people were convicted under Section 302, Red with 120B. Almost 3,000 persons were similarly convicted, were released by Tamil Nadu government, even within a period of seven years of imprisonment, right? So, these people were convicted like them. They should have also got the benefit like them. These people cannot be treated differently by anyone. But of course, you know, it is a political uh, situation. Congress also says the yes. order is unacceptable. They say, because naturally they have to say like that. This, people think, you know, this release is possible only because of the premature release scheme in Tamil Nadu. Not otherwise. Because we have a scheme of premature release of life convicts, they are fitting in, in the scheme. That's why they are released. It is not a concession. It is a right to be released. Actually, it is a right to be considered for release. And they were rightly considered. And on 9-9-2018, uh, the then government took the cabinet decision. Everything was in accordance Does with the Does your law. client, Ms. Nalini, 
have any message for the family of Mr. Rajiv Gandhi or those people who died in that bomb blast? You know, <clears throat> from the beginning, Nalini says she's innocent. She's innocent. She's, you know, dragged in this, uh, you know, affair. So what, what message can she give? Because she never uh, said she has committed the crime. She is even today or, you know, during the last 30 years, her stand is she is innocent. This is the message. She can give such a message. Innocent people will ultimately be released. Lastly, the Supreme Court has also taken note of what it calls satisfactory behavior by yes. all these yes. convicts. Yes. Particularly, it is referred to Nalini that she has acquired more degrees. Yes. Tell us about that. How did she... You see, <clears throat> during the last 30 years, already she was supposed to graduate. And she obtained, you know, many degrees afterwards. And she is, you know, at the time when she was arrested, she was just 21 or so. She was pregnant. With all these things, she studied a lot. She studied a lot. Her character was, you know, exceptionally good. And, you know, every year the provision officer was recommending and, you know, the advisory board was recommending, but she was not released. So, ultimately, the government of Tamil Nadu took a decision because it is a decision, right decision. Nobody should be kept in Tamil Nadu as a prisoner after 20 years. Beyond 20 years, nobody should be kept as a prisoner. That she, is the scheme. She, she had a child born in the jail. Yes. And uh, do you think once she is free now, what, what, what do you think her priorities would be? You know, because the prime of life, you know, it is gone. She has to adjust to the society, new way of life actually. So every day she was in tears. So today I will be released, tomorrow I will be released. For the last four years, almost Nalini is in tears every day because the government has taken a decision, the governor didn't. She's in the UK, the wedding on the cards now? She couldn't go. She couldn't go. Of course, you know, even she couldn't meet the daughter. We tried. Even she was denied permission to talk to her over video. Ultimately, we came to the Honorable Court and got some order even to communicate with their family members. Thank you so much for your time, sir. That was the lawyer of Nalini, one of the six convicts who the Supreme Court has set free. Uh, if everything goes well, tomorrow morning she could actually walk free or breathe free. At the moment, she is under parole, under uh, police monitoring. And only after the hard copy of the order reaches the jail authorities, she would be technically set free. And after that, we hope to speak to her. But at the moment, the Congress says this is a legal thing and there should not be any celebration or glorifying the convicts who have been rightfully punished, they say, for the offences they committed. Well, thank you so much, Sam Daniel Nalini. Uh, one of the accused, not the accused actually, one of the convicts in this case, she, uh, the, one of the basis on which she has been set free, as Sam Daniel and the lawyer was mentioning, she's her good behavior and several degrees that she has earned in the process of during the duration that she was in jail. But uh, uh, Congress now coming out and saying that this is not something that is acceptable. The verdict is not acceptable to them. The attack uh, and the assassination of Prime Minister, former Prime Minister was nothing short of an attack on the sovereignty of India. DMK saying this was a stand that the government took on the basis of humanitarian grounds, just a matter of time and a procedural delay before the convicts of this case will walk free out of the jail.